there are few things that can break the immersion quite as abruptly as an invisible wall. It really stops me from escaping into these fantastical worlds and it yanks me right back to real life. And I don't want to deal with real life. Like paying bills or whatever. Again. <sighs> there we go. Where was I? Oh yeah. I hate invisible walls. It's what I call an immersion c blocker. Like loading screen, interface vomit, obnoxious sidekicks explaining every little thing. The entire game marveling at your every microscopic achievement. <coughs> Jolly good cough, Sam. You're gonna do just thank you. you are our only hope. All of these things take me out of Lord of the Dragon Age scrolls and puts me right back in my desk eating chocolate with no pants on, listening to my upstairs neighbor's obnoxiously loud TV. Help! This is definitely not the TV. Help! So I can help. In case it wasn't clear by now, immersion is pretty important to me. A good place to start would be to get rid of those pesky invisible walls. Now how the hell am I gonna do that? Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. First we need a world we can remove those walls from. In my previous devlog, I created a simple landscape divided into smaller patches of terrain. This was fine for testing landscape deformation, but if I want players to explore a vast world, I'm gonna have to make a smarter system. I can't simply increase the amount of patches to fit the world, since that would require too many patches, which would bring down performance. So I ended up creating a completely new system. This time I generate a small grid of patches and every time the player steps onto a new patch, the patches furthest away are relocated to fill new areas. In this state, however, if you keep walking in one direction, you will come across the first problem. In Unreal and in all other engines that I've worked in, you have a finite space that the player can explore. In the case of Unreal, that's 20 km squared. So at some point your exploration is gonna come to a halt. And the solution to this is to offset everything back to the center when players reach the boundaries. And the player is none the wiser. It's ever so slightly boring to explore a flat world, so let's add a landscape generator. I started by generating a few noise textures at different frequencies and layering them on top of each other. I then used this texture to define the height of every point on my landscape. I also created some simple controls so I can adjust each layer and fine tune the look of the landscape. The landscape material has also been updated. This is probably something I'm going to continue to improve over time. The next obvious problem is the very limited view distance. It's pretty hard to immerse yourself when you can clearly see the end of the world. My current solution for this was to add two additional rings of terrains. With each ring of patches, the patches become bigger and less detailed. So the terrain your character is standing on has the highest fidelity and then it gradually becomes less detailed as you look towards the horizon. At the moment I have roughly a 7km view distance, which I think is acceptable for now. I'm making it all seem kind of simple, and it kind of was, but then again it kind of wasn't. Maybe I'm not giving a fair representation of the process I went through. The generation of the noises for the landscape was pretty simple, but aligning those patches? Different story. Oh, and getting rid of those seams between the patches? Also a headache. The patches also have such a low polygon count for it to be performant that I had to mask the blocky terrain with tessellation. And then you have to make sure everything happens without freezing the game every time it loads. This is my third time doing world generation and some of these things are still giving me headaches. What I like to do to get rid of those headaches is drawing. And I've been drawing quite a lot lately. So mostly random drawings except for this deer-like creature that I want to include in a future devlog to help showcase a dynamic ecosystem. I've kept the design somewhat rough since I expect that the final concept will emerge in the modeling stage. Ok so back to the world generator. Running towards the horizon for infinity makes the world seem less tangible and more like someone's boring nightmare. In order to emulate a spherical planet, I decided to make it so that when players reach the end of the world map, they loop around to the other side. 
as you can see though, simply looping my noise texture would result in an ugly scene. So instead I had to convert my two dimensional noise to a four dimensional noise. And one way to visualize this is if the world was shaped like a donut rather than a flat square. Now when you continue to move side to side along the x axis, you will eventually end at the same coordinate. And the same happens if you move up and down the y axis. This makes the world seamlessly connect at the borders. Which is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> Now that the hard part is done, it's time to add a bit of polish to the whole thing. I added footstep sounds and visual effects for different types of terrain. I added a minimap, day and night cycle, a clock and a day number. I also added an object generator to populate the landscape with rocks and a few sculptures. To fine tune how and where things are created, I added a bunch of controls, like minimum and maximum scale, whether or not it should be aligned to the terrain surface, what kind of slope angle it likes to be on, and lastly minimum and maximum attitude. It's very obvious when it loads the next set of objects at the moment, so that's definitely an area to improve. If you've ever played something like Breath of the Wild, instead of going from quest icon to quest icon, you use your eyes to see something in the environment far away and then go on an adventure to discover what that is. And that's definitely a direction I want to take as well, which is not really possible with the current implementation of the object generator. So it's going to need to be aware of special objects it creates far into the distance to feed the player's curiosity. Next thing I wanted to recreate from my landscape is this volcanic steam that can be found in Iceland. For this I'm using a simple plane with a material that is doing a couple of tricks. I want to make sure that players never notice that this is just a plane. So when you get close to the plane it begins to disappear. Hopefully in a way that you never notice. The next trick is to make it slowly disappear as you look from the side where it would be very noticeable that it is just a plane. And lastly I fade the plane with whatever it intersects with. Now let's add some animated texture of smoke and see what that looks like. Considering that the texture is just whatever I could find in the marketplace, I think it's looking pretty decent. To really get the best result and get rid of the obviously looping texture, I'm gonna have to do my own fluid simulations in Maya at some point. But for now this is done. The last thing I worked on was improving the terrain generator. It's pretty obvious that it's the same kind of very soft noise layered on top of each other. It's looking a bit evenly blobby. Real landscapes have soft and hard shapes combined. One quick way to fix this is to add a curve for each layer of the noise. This curve lets me define how the landscape heights interpret the noise that I generate. A curve like this, for example, will create this kind of result. It really helps mask the blobby nature of these noises and helps make a slightly more convincing landscape. We have a bunch of patches that loads the world as you explore. Extra rings of patches to increase view distance. Tessellation to increase polygon count. You can run around the planet in a seamless loop. The patches are aligned with no seams and a pointless storyline for this video. But most important of all, no invisible wall. So let's take a look at the final result. The next big thing for the landscape will be roads and cities. Back when the project was being made in Unity, I got some roads and cities working without doing any pathfinding calculations, which is a traditional way to connect paths. This was by far the most difficult task and not something I'm looking forward to solving for my new system in Unreal. But it's an important one and something I feel will set it apart from other games with procedural worlds. At least I don't recall seeing this feature before. That's it for this video. If you like my content, press the like button and leave a comment down below. It really helps expose my videos on YouTube. Ooh.